sugar cane, sweet sugar cane. The sweetness of our southern dreams. All right, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you to Drs. White and Gravoff for inviting us out. My name is Chad Weber. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a product marketing manager for John Deere based out of Thibodeau at our sugar cane harvester factory. I work mainly in Asia, um, <clears throat> but we've been invited here to talk a little bit about uh, our harvest monitor product. There's a lot of interest, obviously, uh, all over the world about it, so uh, we wanted to come and give you some information on the product, recap on what we've already introduced, and a little bit of a sneak preview of what's to come. So with that, I'll jump right in. Let's do a quick recap on what we've introduced in 2018. For those of you who don't know, we introduced a uh, yield monitor called Harvest Monitor in 18 that measures yield, uh, trash, residue, loss, all kinds of good stuff. A full decision support system for sugarcane. And the way we do it is pretty neat. We've got optical yield monitoring. We monitor trash optically. We look at residue, fuel per ton, pour rate. We can even read field elevations. Uh, and count our transport loads. And the goal of this is for uh, operators to be able to make real-time adjustments, identify an opportunity to get better, perform better, make an adjustment in the cab. Uh, and for longer-term decisions about your farming practices or your operations, uh, we also have a suite of solutions in the John Deere Operations Center on myjohndeere.com where you can go in and look at color-coded maps of your trash, your speeds, your, your yields, and uh, and hopefully drive better decision-making long-term for your operation. So it's a really, uh, really neat tool, and it's got a lot of neat technology. A lot of the technology you're already familiar with, uh, and there's some cool new things we've added. So you all know what GPS is, right? We've got GPS with RTK, and we use that to geo-reference our data so you know where the data is happening in the field. Um, we can... Uh, measure the field ele elevations and ground speed with that technology as well. We've got stereoscopic cameras, so we're looking at the mass that's moving through the elevator, taking tens of thousands of photos of that every, every minute. Convolutional neural networks, don't ask me what that is, uh, but we have it, and it allows us to be able to distinguish what's billets and what's trash in the elevator through the cameras. And of course, telematics, so we can transfer that data to the stakeholders anywhere at any time. We've been doing that for a long time. And now we have Smart Clean. So with our model year 2021 introduction, which will be machines delivered after June of this year, we're going to have a new feature on the Harvest Monitor called Smart Clean. Okay? And that's really what I want to focus on uh, in the talk this morning, because this is all new, and really, we really think it's going to drive a lot of value uh, for our customers. So uh, again, this isn't, for me, this isn't an academic exercise. We're doing a lot of figuring and spitballing here, but we want to try to give you an idea of how uh, a product like this might impact the bottom line. So let's start with the technology. Um, we use an accelerometer to read signals from the primary extractor hood, so we're trying to measure what's going through the primary, be it a billet or uh, residue. We also have a pressure sensor in the fan, so that gives us an idea of what, what kind of volume we have going through the primary. Uh, we uh, have a control system or control system software, so that interprets the data and helps us to automate the fan speed based on uh, the targets that the operator sets. And there's some algorithms in the system, so as field conditions change, we can change, we can adapt. So, how does Smart Clean work? Well, first, we use the sensors in the cleaning system uh, to generate a digital signature of everything going through the primary hood. So if a billet strikes the primary hood, it's going to make a very distinctive uh, vibration. We can pick up that vibration and make some assumptions about what's going through there. Next, we take a look at what Harvest Monitor is already capturing on the cameras going through the elevator. So we know what's billets, what's trash. We can compare that information back to what's, uh, what readings we're getting from the Smart Clean system and make a determination about loss. Now, our users, we can monitor billet loss and trash while controlling the fan speed manually. So you can kind of take a look at where you're at, and make adjustments in real time. But we also have a feature that allows the computer on board to control fan speed automatically. So you set the loss target, you set the trash target, and you let the computer control the fan for you automatically. 
We've been doing a lot of testing with this new technology, and we invited the uh, SRA, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, uh, Sugar Research Australia, to come and, and play with the system, and they were able uh, to confidently validate the technology, so we feel really good about it. So let's take a look at what typical cleaning looks like in Louisiana. This, uh, this scatter plot chart here shows uh, what our Louisiana control group, our Louisiana test group, uh, did on cleaning. On the y-axis, we have the fan speeds in RPM, and on the x-axis, we have the actual percent trash loss. So you can see it's pretty consistent around that you know, 700 to 750 RPM range and loss levels ranging. I'll try to use a laser here. Loss levels ranging all the way from, from zero out to about 19%. If you look at the color coding here, the more yellow the plot gets, that's a, a higher percentage of time spent at that particular level of loss. So you can see we've got quite a lot of yellow out here between 15 and 19% loss. That's not where we want to be, but that's typical. Now, when our test grower used the Smart Clean system with a, a trash target set at 5%, you can see now we have a much broader distribution of speeds and trash levels. You see we have a little bit more yellow down near zero, which is good to see. Uh, and we have an actual elevator trash percent in that test of 6.59%. So we went from an average of 11.48% for the control group to 6.59% for the test group. Pretty significant. That was a 43% reduction in elevator trash in this study. So you might be thinking, okay, well they got, you know, they got the trash down, they probably saw higher losses. No, as a matter of fact, we didn't. We got 77% reduction in primary extractor losses in that same test. So in our Louisiana control group, if you look at the, the chart here, you'll see we were getting about one point, uh, excuse me, about two uh, tons per acre loss in the control group, but in this test with the Smart Clean system, they got all the way down to less than half a ton. So pretty, pretty significant. So just think about that for a minute. If you put pen to paper, uh, the USDA says the average grower got $33 per gross ton last year. So if you have a thousand acre farm, if you use those numbers, then your revenue just went up by over $50,000 pretty significant, and that's just the loss, all right? We're not talking about the trash or wagon density or sugar recovery or anything like that. So that's pretty significant for our customers. So what about load density? Well, we figured we were getting trash way down. What does that mean for load density? Um, did a little bit of hunting on the internet. Norris has a good study he did in 2010 that shows how uh, wagon densities go up as trash levels go down. I thought, would it be fun to kind of see what our our test customer would have achieved uh, using this particular regression. And what we found was moving that, tra that percent leave trash down about 5% made the wagon densities go up enough to where on the same tonnage he would have sent about 200 less trucks to the mill that year. Extremely significant, right? So if you're handling your own highway transport, uh, that could be a tremendous savings for you there as well. So less trash, less trucks. What about sugar recovery? The most recent information I could find from, from LSU was that uh, for every 1% increase in trash you have, you lose about three pounds of the yield per gross ton, latest data I could find. So how might a system like this impact your actual sugar recovery? We don't have as much trash in the, in the wagon absorbing that sugar and causing that loss. So we uh, went and looked at the information from the American Sugar Cane League and, of course, LSU Ag Research, and we looked at the price of sugar, the price of sugar at that particular time when we conducted the test. And by moving that trash level down five points, we get, theoretically, 15 pounds of additional sugar per gross ton. So when you do the math, uh, we've increased recoverable sugar by close to 7%. And that increases the value of the crop by about $150 per acre at that time. So again, really significant when you start to look at the dollars and cents of what the system can do and, and how it can help. And again, this is just the smart, smart clean stuff. This isn't all the harvest monitor. 
uh, benefits that we talked about here last year. Fuel economy is big, right? Uh, controlling fan speed is always a great way to, to try and control your fuel economy. We did a separate test uh, with the participator in Florida uh, in burnt cane conditions when they were really trying to drive those loss rates through the primary down. And we got some pretty impressive numbers here as well. Uh, overall, we reduced fan speed by an average of about 300 RPM in this front. And in turn, we were able to reduce fuel consumption by about 20%. So for this particular uh, grower, uh, they're anticipating with this system about $4,000 in fuel savings per machine per season. Now, this isn't burnt cane. So in green cane, obviously, those numbers are going to be a little bit different. Uh, but it just kind of goes to show you that no matter what the situation is, no matter what the conditions are, the varieties are, uh, there's something to be had from controlling trash and loss through the primary. All right, so let's take a look at some benefits. Uh, as we all know, there's some competing systems, especially for uh, measuring yield out there in the system, uh, out there in the universe. What makes ours better? Well, first of all, we use a non-contact system, so we actually hover the camera over the cane, so we are not uh, the they're they're not sensors coming into contact with the crop, wearing against the crop, failing, having to be replaced. Uh, so we think that's a big benefit. Uh, our optical cameras can distinguish yield from trash. So if you use a load cell, for example, that load cell doesn't know what's yield and what's trash. So you tend to get uh, inaccurate results. We can make that distinction. We have several calibration options. So someone asked earlier about calibration. We can use mill data to calibrate. We can use weigh wagons. There's, I think, three total different methods that we can use to calibrate to keep the the data as accurate as possible. We've got a lot of depth in our data. We're giving you field ele elevation, residue, speed, pour rate, fuel, you name it. There's so many things that we can measure with this system because of the technology that uh, we feel like we're giving our customers more. The data is available in the cab. You can get it on your computer at home. You can get it on your cell phone through JD Link or on your tablet, whatever device you have, so it's really portable. Um, for those of you have, who've been uh, in the Ops Center on MyJohnDeere.com, you've probably seen these maps. They're very intuitive, very easy to see, color-coded. So um, we think you guys are, are going to really enjoy working with those. And of course, the cherry on top is a smart, clean system. So we're controlling fan speeds now automatically to control the loss and the trash levels that you set for your machine. So giving you guys more control than ever. So in review, We've got this harvest monitor system that measures yield, trash, fuel rates, load counts, and much, much more. We give you the data in the cab, in the office, or anywhere you are in the world. You can analyze your data uh, on a spreadsheet, or you can look at a georeference color-coded map. Whatever floats your boat, it's all available for you uh, in the Ops Center on MyJohnDeer.com. Of course, our new smart clean system measures extractor losses in trash, and we can control that fan speed automatically, or you can control it manually if you prefer, so a lot of control there. Um, we have several key advantages over competing systems, but as we all know, we're in the business of making money, so the big one is we make you more money, and that's what we're trying to do here. So that, I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have on the system. <laughs> so that's a good question. We don't have the the pricing out on the smart clean system yet because it, again we're about six months out from start of production but it's going to be an add-on to the harvest monitor so it's going to be a new feature on the harvest monitor so when you purchase the harvest monitor you'll get the smart clean system with it so we don't see a big jump in price on that the technology is pretty low cost but um, we ought to have something in the next couple of months we're actually talking about pricing right now Say that again? The maintenance on it? You know, I, br I brought an engineer, John Dighton. He could maybe speak to that a little bit. I don't think there's a whole lot there from a maintenance perspective. On the smart clean system itself, there's not really any wear components or anything. Uh, the thing is, right now, it's only testing the working John Deere hoods and fan blades. And when you keep those in there, you can you know, you can be confident of the performance. So if your, your fan hood wears out, something else. The sensor response will change, so your, your targets will change, and it'll have to be a little different to relearn it. So 
Did you hear that? So, so what John said is that the, we, you know, we use a non-contact system, so we don't expect you to get a lot of wear on the actual components for Smart Clean or har Harvest Monitor. But these, uh, this technology is tested to work with John Deere blades, John Deere hoods, so in so much as those components wear, uh, would probably be the first thing you'd need to replace. So we would encourage you to stick with the John Deere parts to make sure that the system is running and, and uh, giving you accurate results. It does it automatically, but I'm going to let John give you the details on that one. I got you. Go to, go to your green and yellow slide. I'm sorry. I'll let him answer this question first. And... All right. On the left is what we all do in Louisiana. In the morning, we got a lower fan speed. I mean, we got a higher fan speed because it's wet, right? So we're trying to clean the cane when the moisture's there. And then manually, we drop it down. Whenever, 10 a.m. or whatever, whenever the water burns off. What Smart Clean does is it measures the, it's getting feedback from you. Yep, yep. It measures the trash content throughout the day. And you drive faster, you're going to have more trash. You drive slower, you're going to have less trash. Or you change your fan speed, you're going to have more trash or less trash. So what it does is it's monitoring the leaf trash and the loss from the fan in real time. Whether the crop changes or the way you're running the machine changes, it adjusts the fan speed. So you see on the right side, it speeds up when it needs to, it slows down when it needs to. Did that, did that answer the question? Yeah, someone had also asked about um, this morning before the presentation had asked about you know, different varieties and how that might impact, and we talked about that as well. Remember, we're 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 using the stereoscopic cameras to view what's actually in the elevator. Um, so as you know, you go through different varieties or different conditions, we're comparing that information back to Smart Clean, kind of using that as a baseline for what we measure. So as those conditions change in the elevator, they, they sync back to the system and, and we know what's in there. I believe there was a gentleman back here who had, was waiting to ask a question. Yeah, right there. as often as you want or as infrequently as, I mean, the data is always going to be accurate relative to itself, right? Um, if you want to get your yield marks close to what, you know, the mill is reporting, then, you know, you can, you can calibrate it that way. Again, we're not using any, any contact systems at all. We're, we're actually hovering the camera over the elevator so nothing touches it. It gets some dust. It'll tell you. It'll even tell you when to clean the lens. Uh, it's pretty slick, but nothing is coming into contact with the crop at all. So, from a maintenance or service standpoint, we normally recommend every day you just spray the lenses with water and wipe them dry. And we've seen them run for more than four weeks without getting dirty. But it's one of those things. If you just don't check, you're gonna let it get one speck of mud on it and then cause a problem. You can see it, you can watch the camera in real time. The only other thing about mud is if you're running low fan speeds and burnt cane, you'll build a lot of mud up in the hood. We didn't see it ever get to be enough to affect the system. But if you have you know, a couple hundred pounds of mud in your fan because you've been cutting burnt cane and then you all of a sudden jump to green cane, it can affect you, so that, that's the only th sensitivity to mud that I know of. Thank you. Sugar cane, sweet sugar cane The sweetness of our southern Shade beneath this tree shields me from relentless heat. An afternoon shower possible.